All right, and we're live here with uh, John Rivas, five weeks out from the Arnold Amateur Super Heavyweight Bodybuilding coming up here. Mm -hmm. Welcome, John. Good to see you. Looking good? Feeling good. Um, you know, everything's been, everything's been good. Everything's been normal. Uh, I really haven't had – I've had to talk to Justin a few times about this prep and uh, – you know, we, we always joke about the cliff week or the what were we talking about last week, like the quantum week or whatnot. Yeah, yeah whatever you um, it. <laughs> so it was funny because I had a few people like message me uh, and and make a comment. I think Adam, um, one of the guys in my area, made a comment about it. Uh, I posted a few photos yesterday or the day before. And uh, he's like, oh, this must be the week. And yeah, I mean, that's just, just what my body does. Um, I don't feel any different. I don't. You know, before we go into it, you know, I just, I just don't feel any different. It's just once my body just hits a certain point, and it's just like boom, and then there it is. And uh, yeah. I think you know, Justin was Justin's always going to be, you know, making sure that we don't rush anything. Um, but I feel like we're in a really good spot. And uh, like, yeah, you know, we weren't glutes peeled six weeks out. But for my body type, I don't even know if that would be a really good way of doing it because um, trying to hold that conditioning for a month and a half, two months um, may actually sort of go against the way that my my body works. I get a little stringy. Um, so I think we may, you know, really, really, really nail this one. So I'm excited. Well, cool. Let's jump into it. So we got... Uh... Got five weeks out here. Let's kind of roll through, get to the spot that we want to get to. <clears throat> so yeah, down about another two pounds, but you know, mm -hmm. getting closer. You kind of sounds like you have that. You know, and you got the show really in sight. So it sounds like training and energy is good right now. Everything's Still, fine. Yeah, training. Up. Training feels great. I think the the only thing is like randomly in the morning, um, I'll feel a little a little haze, a little fatigue. But this is the best the preps ever felt. And to be fair, um, full disclosure, like we'll get into later, um, uh, I'm at eating no added fats. Uh, my carbs are, I mean, I'm probably taking in 110, 120, maybe um, five days out of the week. So all my workout days. And then, of course, we have a low day, which I'm probably taking like 30 grams of carbs a day um, and still no fat. So it's been probably the hardest diet I've ever done. But. I feel the best and I've maintained the most size and it's, so it's sort of weird. It's, it's, this is an interesting one. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. Well, we'll kind of walk into it. I mean, this is, uh, you know, again, doing the best we can here with the, uh, it looks like images. I got bigger every week. I grew yeah. <laughs> well from the cell phone, uh, size, I, you know, uh, maybe when, when one of our marketing people get back, they can go in and clean some of these up, but, uh, yeah, you can see some more, you know, separation in your legs, um, the midsection, the intercostals, definitely, you know, um, my yeah, muscles are showing we've, up. We've, I mean, doing the just normal, normal pinch test, um, the abdominals have pretty much lost uh, almost all the body fat and um, the front of the legs are never the problem. You know, they're holding a little bit of water, but that's fine right now with the amount of salt and, and everything that we're doing and, um yeah I, I sleep i think probably the only thing that that's a little off is sleep but that's normal for prep yeah it's not really yeah. gonna be that good well this was your uh update your bicep yeah it's bicep. sort of hard to see with those photos um the difference but there's yeah definitely a body fat difference i'm probably a little flatter now um, yeah what what was the day before this or day of was this in the morning or those remember? should have been both in the morning. Um, I don't know when the photo on the left was taken. That was the one on the right is fasted. Um, they should both be fasted in the morning. Yeah, midsection definitely looks tighter. And I think, you know, for a lot of the viewers out there, just a reminder, if you haven't seen the other vlogs is, you know, Justin's big and, and your coach, whoever your coach is, should be big on, you know, not pumped, uh, bad lighting, like mm -hmm. when they're taking pictures and setting them in because that's going to help make sure you look the best on stage. So, um so yeah any other uh uh main changes through training uh re related to this no or? no um i mean just continuing to do uh core work 
and uh, pretty much doing one exercise. Um, Chris Cormier gave me that recommendation uh, about two years ago was just to do about one exercise because sometimes it's hard for us to want to do extra movements on top of our training. Um, for instance, like auxiliary stuff like ab work or calf work or whatever. It's pretty easy just to walk out of the gym when you're done training. But, you know, he was able to be like, hey, one exercise at the end of all your workouts. And that's what I've been doing. And that's it's worked great. So, yeah. So just in how many sets and reps generally do you try to do? Varies. I'll probably do like four or five, depending on how I feel. Like if I'm doing one and I'm cramping super bad, um, like towards the beginning of prep, uh, I'll probably stick to like two or three sets. Um, but towards the end, like now, you know, we're inside of five weeks. Uh, my abs are pretty conditioned. So I could, I think I did like six sets the other day and I was totally fine. So, yeah. And are you doing any kind of, um, like vacuum or like, uh, uh, uh planking type stuff or is it more like weighted kind of like more isometric, muscle? like holding stuff? Yeah. yeah, not, yeah. Really, not really. Um, a little bit. I used to do that a lot. Um, what I focus on. So there's like core strength and then there's like core activation. Right. So what I focus on, and this is a good one for people. And I show this to my clients as well to really activate i'll stand against the wall or when you first start stand against the wall and what you're going to want to do is pretty much envision your stomach trying to touch your spine so don't flex down try to bring your stomach in so that it's trying to touch your spine and you're going to notice you have a different level of fatigue with your abs it's going to feel a little different mm. uh, it's going to feel really hard normally when i start this with my clients during posing you know, they're used to crunching down the abs and, and flexing the abs. But when they start like really activating it, they might last 25 seconds, 30 seconds. And they'll be like, that's the hardest thing I've ever done with my core. Um, and then so, you know, over time you can progress and progress. So what I do is like when I do cardio, I'll do about 15 minutes where my core is completely sort of activated. Yeah. You know, all parts of it are tight, not just flexing down, but just activating yeah. where you can yeah. walk around and your core is um core is tight yeah no it's good stuff it's good, good it's a good pointer because i think people don't focus much on control mm -hmm. or posing you know so even yeah. the people who are just like never going to be on stage but they want to look good at the beach or mm -hmm. look good with the tight clothes on like you know just that little activation not like not like the old yeah. sucking it in but like no, if you can yeah. activate a little bit yeah. it's good for posture good for control yeah. you know so mm -hmm. so you can probably see a lot more on this one yeah that's what i was say yeah, um, hamstrings, you know. The front gets thing. lean pretty fast, but I say, like you said, the the back. Um, probably where we notice it the most is is through the back, the lower back. Yeah. Starting to get lower lats. You're starting to see it come out. And, um, you know, even detail. today I'm tighter. Yeah, today I'm tighter than that photo was uh, yesterday or the day before. And, well, um, with how low your carbs are, you know, for the last couple of weeks and how mm -hmm. and your activity level so high, mm -hmm. you know, um, and your weight is, has only went down a couple pounds. So, you know, like there's it actually went up. A, I think it, it might've gone up a pound this week. To be well, I was going to say, you know, that there's like a lot of water in there. I would imagine if you're, you know, you're still holding your weight, but you're two, three weeks. Not as much fat and more water. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. But it's still, mm -hmm. it's still popping through. So that's what's, yeah. I don't know. I just remember that like the last week and a half week, like it was just like, you went through, you go through like another transformation as things start to tighten a little more and the inflammation goes mm -hmm. down a little bit. You're like, holy crap. So and it's not yeah, really always, just fat, you know, it's, it's weird. Cause I've always held water a little bit more. Um, I've noticed that we've held water a little bit more, but for this one, you know, this prep, it doesn't seem to really be an issue as much. Um, and what I've focused on too is really making sure that, you know, every muscle on my body is, is, is being worked and trained. So that's pushing against the skin. Um, and even, you know, doing cardio, I have a little bit thicker skin on my glutes. Um, the glutes are, are, it's hard to tell from this shot, but you'll see from the side shots, the glutes are starting to come in. Um, but I have a little bit thicker skin back there. That's probably the only spot on my body I do, but this is a tip and trick for, for anyone doing, um, prep. I've started doing my cardio on incline. Um, I've started incorporating some glute work and I've found that, I mean, I never really train glutes to be honest. I mean, maybe on auxiliary movement where 
I'm working like a squat or something in my, but even then I don't really back squat that much anymore. It's more of uh, focused quad work and focused hamstring work. So the glutes don't get as much work as when I was doing powerlifting and low bar squatting. So yeah. that being said, it's like, okay, I got to work them a little bit, get blood flow. Um, Justin and I talked about this and, and, and I talked to a buddy the other day, James Ball, where, you know, studies have come out getting muscle or blood flow into that area helps, you know, break up some of that older fat, just getting the nutrients in there, breaking up some of that stubborn fat. And I've been doing that this time and, and the glutes have been coming in really well. They're much fuller. There's no loose skin there. Um, it, it just, it looks a lot better. I think it's going to look really good on stage. Okay. Good deal. Cool. Yes. Yeah, the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, you know, Justin was on last week and he was talking about too, just like the roundness. So you can, it's interesting because you can see like mm -hmm. just that subtle difference in each, mm -hmm. uh, Every you know, week. a three check in difference, like the roundness of mm -hmm. the bicep, the shoulders, mm -hmm. you know, the chest. Yeah. Your chest actually, it looks a lot tighter too. It takes shape. Yeah. It just, yeah. it just takes shape. Um, you know, Justin keeps harping on like, now I'm flat. So, you know, everything I'm, I'm as depleted as depleted can be. I mean, we're right. running pretty much barely any carbs, no grams, right. no added grams of fat at all, like zero. And so I'm depleted. So I was happy with these photos. If this is a depleted flat, non-carbed up, you know, just sort of looking state right now, I was like, okay, we're, we're in a decent spot. Yeah, and like you go back a couple of check ins. I, I remember that feeling as you're pro progressing through, and like I know people call it like the fugly phase, you know? Mm. And it's like, I remember going, like, oh crap, like what am I going to look like? Because I was so flat and deflated. I still had some fat. I think. And it's going to that transition yeah. to where everything like looked loose almost. I mean, it looks like you've you've passed that phase yeah um, I would some say... people in some body parts it's more excessive than others but i remember i had it yeah. in my chest where i'm like i've never had any kind of like gyno issues or whatever like why does my mm -hmm. chest look so fat or like you know whatever and then it like just tightened right up a couple weeks later came into yeah. form you know yeah that's I, I would say the photo on the left the farthest one on the left that would be going through the fat like uh low carb phase and then you know by this time all the way on the right i mean the body fat's you know pretty much gone and um so you're eight even though i'm flat and small you can see the roundness of the shoulders and the arms and the you know the legs and, and things like that but I mean, you're right it's uh it's it's tough i think that a lot of people have difficulty going through prep because you look so different when you're full as to when you're flat right and if there are some body parts on people everyone has strong everyone has weak body parts normally the weak body parts are the ones that look the worst when you're flat right and so people get too caught up in i mean there are some guys that should have turned pro a long time ago and it looks like they just couldn't get past that phase of being like hey i'm small right now or in their mind they're small even though we're completely not small Right. Fine, they're small. And it's like they just don't push past that little phase to feel small and burn that little bit of fat off. And then because when you get on stage, the leaner you are, the bigger you look. So right. No, it makes sense. I just had the uh, I had some kind of bonus ones here mm -hmm. uh, that we didn't have piercings, like you mentioned. Yeah, on the side chest, see the glutes coming in and the yeah. side tricep mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it's just the, it's just the fingers uh, popping, the little fingers. Yeah. You know, yeah, I got some some lines in the in the glutes and the attachments and stuff. So they're starting to come through now. So I think, you know, realistically, I'm thinking two and a half, three weeks out, we'll be ready to go. Um, so about another two weeks, uh, two and a half weeks, we'll be uh, 100 percent um, ready to go. And then we can sort of just slowly eat into the show and, and try to fill out slowly and not try to rush anything um, and sort of do it the smart way. I know that Justin, Justin had been planning on doing that a little bit earlier, but like you said, the way the Arnold went, and I mean, if we get in, if we get a hundred percent in shape, glute showing and everything by two weeks out, that means that we died it for seven weeks. So right. we went from off season to contest ready in seven weeks. So you know, can't I'm not going to sit here and complain about that. Yeah, no, this looks good though. You know, good. 
the roundness or the, the, the shelf between, you know, the shoulder, the tricep bicep separation, like you can definitely tell there's a big, big difference this week. Like you, like yeah. you were saying earlier, lower back, you know, definitely tell a big difference. So and we won't yeah. spend a lot of time on diet cause it's pretty much besides the added fat here, which I uh, needed to there. drop that. That's my mistake. Um, but yeah, all the added fats dropped here. High yeah, days it's pretty been, much it's been what zero. I think it's been yep. zero added fats for like the last week and a half. Yeah. So not, not there's only you know there's only so much more you can drop really. So there's not, not really. probably not I gonna mean, be much change yeah. the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You're getting down there, and then cardio. There's a pretty big change. You have two sessions, right? Well, that was like a week or two ago, but um, forty five so, and thirty. Yeah. So it's not five times a week. Uh, Up to it's six, six times now. a week. Gotcha. Um. So six times a week. So pretty much every morning, other than quad day. I'll do uh, 45 minutes fasted and um, the 30 minutes I'll do four to five times a week post-workout in the afternoon. Yeah. And, and what's your type that you like to do in the morning? Uh, treadmill. Yeah. Is you have treadmill at the house or are you going to the gym? No, I got it in my office um, okay. right here. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I think I dropped like 700 on it or something. It's like not a, not a crazy amazing one, but it's actually really nice. And it's sort of small and it like folds up so I can just put it in my office and, and do it in there. I don't even know if I would have the, uh, the energy to drive to the gym multiple times just to do cardio and training and stuff. Cause it's about 20 minutes away. So I don't know if I would yeah. do that. Now, when it comes to like the training, do you, do you change rep range with your weights or like, you know, I'm going to work a little different angle, like, you know, uh, hit the lower lap more this week or this, this, this part of the shoulder a little differently, or, or is it pretty consistent? You feel right. You know, it's consistent. The only change is I might, I might in the off season, let's say I've got enough energy, uh, enough, um, glycogen in the muscles, enough ATP to actually, knock out three to four sets uh hard yeah and and push every set hard and i do but i would say now two three sets max um pretty much taking it as close to failure without going over um seems to be working really well so volume comes down a little bit but we're still going heavy we're still pushing um close to failure um yeah and how many people have come out to train with you i know uh, one of your friends recently did right uh, who, who was it who was out there to train with you uh well salvi Salang lives in virginia oh, okay so he's um, pretty close yeah salvi's with uh first attachment as well um he's an ambassador with us but he uh he's yeah he's not too far um he's in the process of moving down to virginia beach so he's, how do the uh, how do the workouts change when you have someone there? Is that something that they don't does? Yeah, it's kind of this just makes it more fun, but you kind of pretty much still and honestly, after. you know. And Salvi knows this too. Um, we'll we'll go through the workout and you know we'll talk to each other a little bit, but barely anything. Um, yeah, because we both know how to. You got to be able to push it, you know, whether someone's there or not. Pretty much, the addition of when Salvi's with me or when I'm with Salvi is let's say for instance on hack squat yeah um okay i want to you get to relax a little bit if someone is there because you know you have a spotter that's um, exactly what i was yeah i was gonna say yeah. the same thing I, I you know but then again i had seven eight plates on hack squat this past week and i was i was taking it to a pr a, a mm -hmm. amount of reps and no one was there spotting me so i i think it's good it's a safety thing um, and I think if, if you're a type of person that needs to have someone regulate that throttle a little bit, especially during prep, it's, it's a, it's a positive for you. But if you understand your body well enough that you start feeling, you know, the exercise, you're like, okay, you know, this is taking it to the point where I'm like right at failure. Or if I go another plate, I'm going to, I might hurt something. Right. So that, that could be a good reason for having a training partner, especially in prep. Yeah, no, I, I, I noticed like uh certain pressing movements where I was a little more compromised, you know, if I had like some, some 
bumps and bruises. Like if I had a partner there, just the mental, I could focus mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. And then I think if other ones, if my, if I felt like my form might be off a little bit, cause I was mm -hmm. just kind of exhausted. Like they would just give a little pointer, or even though usually they wouldn't have to say anything. It was just like that mental thing. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. Cause I usually train by myself, but like I'd have my brother-in-law would drive down and he, he lives about an hour and a half away. And we'd train mm -hmm. legs like four or five times during prep last year for, with me. And, um, you know, that, that is just, it, like you said, it was still intense, but it was like, I think what was different for me is certain positions I was getting in, uh, were, you know, could have compromised my lower back or whatever. I was just like, start, you know, it was nice to have someone there to like mm -hmm. make sure it wasn't being too much of an idiot. So, which is always yeah. good, but <clears throat> all right. Well, I think that pretty much, uh, wraps it up today. We've got the five weeks. We're going to have one of these more, you know, uh, one each week for the next couple of weeks here as we get down to the uh, what, three or four more, I think. Yeah. At this point yeah so uh, we're getting we're getting close we're getting close and so yes, for everybody out there be sure to like subscribe and subscribe and turn on notifications also put comments in the comment sections we always appreciate that and uh you know again be sure to subscribe because um we're going to have a lot of content or different shorts or you know our first attachment instagram or team one dn uh team 1d excuse me instagram is out there or you can find john revis on instagram so as it gets closer to the show we'll you know we'll have more short form content pumping out as well so if you really are kind of excited to see what the what the final steps look like and, and really feel like you're there um be sure to do all those all the fun stuff with the notifications uh, subscribing and so on so thanks again so much and i gotta give a shout out really quick uh to <laughs> my first roommate when i got out of virginia military institute and uh, graduated from there and I moved down to Atlanta, Georgia. And I was living with a buddy, uh, Brooks Conway, and he saw the cup. This cup, <laughs> we had, they were giving them away at Moe's Cross Street. So he remembered the giant cup. So shout nice. out to Brooks. We'll have to cut that out. I'll cut that into some of the shorts that we post out there mm -hmm. too. Make sure he sees that shout out. So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you.